everybody. I understand that all of you are tired today, but I ask your attention, and we will try to go through the presentation as soon as possible. But um, I think that uh, you're tired, uh, you are tired, but you have been excited after the presentation. So let's go and go. On. The topic of my presentation is uh, total site optimization, expanding the horizons. Thank, thanks to Salah. He find me with the help of Isaac. You know, everybody knows who is Isaac. So it was one year, one year ago just. And during this year, we make a lot with him. So he's a very amazing person. And thanks God that uh, I got the possibilities to know him. So uh, during all the presentation we listened today, we see the beautiful cases. We listen about the theoretical basis of uh, osseo densification. And now I uh, want maybe a little bit summarize what we listened today and uh, show my cases. I think uh, you will get enjoyed with, with it, and uh, hopefully we uh, meet you once again, maybe here, by the way, we are, have uh, this amazing hotel and all amenities there, and uh, thank you once again, Salah, you are brilliant. So let's go. This is me, and that's me in my clinic in Moscow, where I'm working since 1997. You know what's this? This is Bible Mountain Ararat, which I have an opportunity to see from my window every day when I visit my homeland, Yerevan. I want to return. Striving the perfection is my motto. Why? Because I see this perfection every day when I visit my homeland. So this is piece of stone which um, are in the ancient uh, capital of my homeland, Ani, which is also located on the territory of Turkey. But let's imagine it was built 1,111 years ago. Look at the perfection of the craftsmen who create this perfection. And we have to try to reach, maybe impossibly to do it, but we have to go in that direction to get this perfection, to uh, try to mimic the nature. Because what we see, nature, create the most perfect creation we ever see. So that's why I say it, eternity in stone. Uh, once again, more than 1,000 years, and it's beautiful, still now. So what gives us also densification? As we listen today, it increased primary stability of the placity implant increasing insertion and removal torque. Preserving the bone bulk, we talk a lot about bone bulk around the implant. It reducing the implant micro motion, allowing us to keep inside the, uh, this, um, motion, this uh, trash of 50 to 100 micrometers. So uh, it uh, increased the percentage of direct bone to implant contact. We talk about that there is no clues about how much we will have with this bone-to-implant contact, but nevertheless, uh, we know that based on theoretical uh, investigation that we got much more bone-to-implant co contact with uh, this technique. It increased bone mineral density, uh, which leads to improved bone healing, and it induced autografting of the bone, uh, part, bone particles, along with, uh, with the osteotomy, which allow more rapid healing of the osteotomy site. So, for successful implant placement, 
We have to have sufficient amount of hard and soft tissue. It's the basics of implant dentistry. And the pur purpose of uh, bone and soft tissue augmentation is to enhance and optimize the quality and the quantity of structural bone, as well as uh, amount of um, and volume of keratinized tissues around the implant. There is different techniques of uh, bone augmentation. We just go through it. It's GBR with resorbable membranes, GBR with non-resorbable membranes. There is dif different of them. It's PTFE membranes, it's titanium mesh, it's uh, titanium reinforced membranes. Uh, we have um, titanium place technique suggested by Dr. Mauro Merli. From Italy, we have screw tenting techniques. Of course, autogenous bone block and um, bone place technique of Dr. Cori. We have interpositional inlay grafting technique, ridge, uh, uh, ridge expansion osteotomy, sausage technique of Ishton Urban, and much more, osteodestruction technique. All these techniques have only one purpose, to create enough amount of bone uh, around the implant to be stable for long period of time, which may allow us to uh, be sure that during 10, 20 years, uh, the implants which we uh, place in, in the bone of, of the patient will survive and uh, we will be happy with them, with the result. The procedure of uh, alveolar rigid augmentation may be more technique and uh, experience sensitive while the implant survival rate is contingent upon the residual bones supporting the dental implant. What does it mean? Sometimes we uh, create a bulk of bone, especially when we do sinus lifting, but uh, saying fairly, uh, the stability which we got is depend on the initial amount of bone which we got, which we have. So it's not so 100% that uh, creating new bone will allow us to get stable situation. And uh, implant placement with simultaneous contour augmentation suggests high predictability of successful aesthetic outcomes. We see that in the cases shown by honorable lecturer today, many cases which support this idea. So when we make osseodensification, when we enlarge, expand our uh, thin uh, ridge, we always try to have two millimeters at least, maybe more, of bone surrounding the implant. And we have different techniques for increasing the amount of um, soft tissue around the implant, amount of keratinized tissues, which is apically positioned partial thickness flap along with vestibuloplasty in combination with free gingival graft. I will show the cases um, with this technique. It's roll envelope flap, which also I love much and use in my practice every day. And it's uh, epically positioned uh, partial thickness flap in combination with subepithelial connective tissue graft. This is what I do every day in my offices. So uh, let's go through the cases which uh, will tell how we use it. Along with the, uh, this amazing invention of Salah, among with osteodensification, because uh, as we listen today, uh, those doctors, those dentists who began to use these drills, they throw away their regular kits using only implant drivers, and that's it. And at least I do like in this way. So, uh, and we have to uh, mention about uh, this um, platform switch switching technique. Even having a switching platform and conical connection of the implant and the abutment, within mucosa surrounding the implant, we will get recession. So it's a matter of the amount of soft tissue, not only on the type of connection between implant and uh, abutment. And uh, in case of uh, sufficient of amount of uh, uh, keratinized soft tissue around the implant, uh, having this conical connection, we, we can be more or less um, confident with the result which we got with this implant system. So, let's go ahead. And uh, 
talking about the technique which we use, we have to uh, remember that the goal we, which we have pertained is that our procedure have to be less complex and less invasive, presenting a lesser re uh, risk of complication. Yeah, we talk about different elaborated techniques of bone augmentation, but let's be uh, fair that um, more, more difficult and complicated our, uh, our um, techniques of grafting is, uh, more higher the chance uh, that we, we will get uh, complication with this technique. So we have to follow the idea that our procedure have to be um, simple, have to be reproducible, and uh, have to, uh, to be with lesser risk, um, taking into account the interest of patients. So, let's begin to uh, look at my cases. This is the case of uh, deficient reach, which we uh, enlarge with help of cortical lamina. This is the zone of lower first molar. Look at, where is my, here it is. Look at this uh, thickness of the reach. So, uh, it's not usual case. We make the scans we see that it's about two and a half, three millimeters of uh, the length of the ridge. We make some uh, measurements and uh, ready to raise the flap. So we're raising buccal and lingual flaps and we see little amount of um, bone at the edge of the ridge. But we want to do something with it, so what we can do? We uh, got our uh, initial drill, two millimeter drill, and go through the uh, ridge at minimum 75 uh, RPM without irrigation. It's the technique I use usually uh, with the standard drills. And then we use our uh, regular drills and make an osteotomy. Look at the, uh, this side. We have the distances uh, at the vestibular side. Uh, this case was done before I was introduced with uh, the um, denser drills. So I want to show the case, how much efforts we need to perform with the cases of thin uh, alveolar ridges without uh, having such amazing tool like uh, denser drills. So we place the implant. Look at this deficiency. This is a regular uh, four and a half millimeter diameter implant with uh, conical connection. And here it is. We have uh, two or three uh, threads which are exposed to, uh, from vestibular side. And uh, directly what we got uh, when we're planning our implant placement. It's uh, 3D CBCT. Um, simulation of implant placement. What we got on uh, CBCT image, the same thing we got with our implants in the site. So we make control X-ray after implant placement. Then got our cortical lamina. Trim it a little bit to avoid sharp edges. Make the perforation of cortical plate to induce some uh, os uh, vascular penetration and uh, to, to reach the marrow of the bone where the osteogenic cells are. Here it is. So harvested are uh, autogenous bone chips from surrounding places, from uh, the linea obliqua externa. Secure the cortical lamina with two titanium screws. Here it is. Make the... Uh, um, amount of uh, such volume of um, place to, to uh, augment it with uh, these autogenous bone chips. This is the harvested autogenous bone chips. And we fill it, the defect. Here it is. Cover it with uh, um, PRF membranes. and make post-op X-ray. This is two uh, titanium screws which uh, secure our 
cortical lamina to uh, the um, ridge and uh, we have the placid implant and augmented um, ridge. So waiting some period of time. Ah, we cover it, of course, with uh, long-lasting uh, collagen membrane, cross-linked collagen membrane, and suturing it with uh, PTFE sutures. Then make a CBCT, look at this. Very nice. This is the cortical lamina. This is the bone which we feel uh, in between the uh, uh, ridge of the uh, alveolar ridge and uh, cortical lamina. And make 3D CBCD image, which, and we look that it looks like what we have inside of the mouth. So we're planning and performing what we have to do make some grafting to get a sufficient amount of uh, bone around the implant. This is the uh, photo one month later when we uh, retrieve our deep horizontal mattress sutures, waiting uh, three more times, uh, three more months, and going to second stage surgery. Raise the membrane, we have enough amount of bone around the implant, it's okay. So uh, we are uh, harvesting some free gingival graft from the pellet, then depitalize it and use to increase the amount of soft tissue around the implant. We use 50 C blades to shave the uh, graft to take out the epithelial layer. And uh, using it with poncho technique, placing on the abutment, healing abutment, This is healing abutment with connective tissue graft. Then suturing. Making control X-ray, which show us sufficient amount of bone around the implant. And uh, after a, a month, we go going to create an emergence profile. Look at this. This is the beginning of the process. The emergence profile, which is created with standard healing abutment. How we create the new emergence profile? Wittenben and Buser uh, describe in their article in uh, 2013, yes, how to create the new uh, emergence profile using dynamic compression technique. What does it mean? We add incrementally uh, the flowable uh, composite at the uh, zone of uh, at the cervical zone of the temporary crown and push the soft tissues to create uh, the desired emergence profile. Not uh, difficult, but time consuming. Nevertheless, I love this technique. And here, uh, the um, citation of the uh, same technique from other authors. Here, the uh, temporary cr crown placed uh, just after taking the impression. And we began to, to uh, use this technique, uh, dynamic compression technique, to uh, increase the uh, volume of soft tissue, to create the uh, sufficient um, and uh, desired emergence profile. Look at this one, this is the beginning, and this is after a month. We uh, do our incremental um, increasing the volume of the cervical part of temporary, cr temporary crown just two times, after each two weeks. And look at these two photos. This is before, and uh, we have, once again, sorry. Here it is. Deficient alveolar ridge and creating new volume of hard and soft tissue. Uh, we do all these procedures without using uh, osteodensification drills because we have no any clue, any idea about such technique. After uh, the fact that we got the new drills, so we change our approach. That's the final crown delivery. Here it is. 
look at this uh, profile of the cervical part of soft tissues. It looks like the natural. I love that technique because uh, at the day of when we um, deliver the final pro prosthesis, we can show the patient the result without any hesitation. This is the final crown. Okay, let's go through other case. Initial zone of the first and uh, first molar and second premolar is the upper jaw. We raise the um, uh, vestibular flap, make a lateral window access, make the sinus lift, uh, place our membrane, feel the bone from um, both sides of the alveolar ridge because we have deficiency from, uh, from uh, palatal and vestibular side. Making standard GBR, placing deep horizontal mattress suture to fix the membrane, covering uh, it with PRF membrane and suturing it. Then waiting some six months is the standard technique. Look at the initial amount of bone, here it is. That's the grafted part in the sinus and from outside and inside, from palatal and vestibular side of the ridge is the zone of uh, first, a second premolar. And look at the amount of initial, initial amount of the bone uh, at the zone of first molar, barely one millimeter of the bone from all sides. And that's the zone of uh, which we create uh, using uh, this lateral approach technique uh, for sinus lifting. So this is the other uh, projection of uh, CBCT scan. We have enough amount of uh, vertical and horizontal bone bulk around uh, the, um, the zone of implantation, about six, seven millimeters more maybe. We uh, make the virtual implant placement. Usually we do it. See that we can place uh, the implant of desired uh, diameter. And going to the second stage surgery, so we uh, raise the membrane and place our membranes. Look at this. We place the implant, att attach it uh, direction, uh, these um, guides. See that it's fair parallel. Here it is. And place the cover screws and suturing the flaps. Twelve days later, we take out the sutures and waiting for some four, uh, four months until the uh, other stage. Then we raise the vestibular flap. It's okay with uh, the integrated implants. So we place healing abutments and using um, apically position flap. You can see here that we uh, make the apically position flap and fix it uh, to periosteum from the uh, uh, base of the flap. So, when we got um, already our temporary crowns, we uh, noticed that we have deficiency from vestibular side, uh, very little amount of keratinized tissue. So we decided to make the vestibular plasty to get uh, sufficient amount of uh, keratinized tissue. Look at this. By the way, Dr. Glackman uh, showed the technique uh, in his hands-on course uh, yesterday. Just uh, leave it for secondary intention healing. And um, after two or three weeks, we got healed, um, uh, healed uh, look at this, zone of uh, attach it keratinized tissue. And one, one more time, I want to return. Look at this. I think this is what we have to uh, got in every cases. We got ideal emergence profile. We got interdental uh, papilla between two implants and of course between the implants and the neighboring tooth. Let's go through the other case case of patient with uh, crystal approach sound and lift utilizing the denser drills. This is pre-op CBCT scan of the case of the patient. So we have the uh, roots of the first molar. Patient, 
not willing to go through the whole procedure at, at a time. So we just uh, take out uh, these roots. We remove the roots, take out the granulations, augmented it with uh, mineralized free derived allograft, keep for some period of time this uh, mol uh, premolar, second premolar, cover the augmented zone with cross-linked collagen membrane, and suturing, fixing the membrane, and uh, then suturing the flaps together. Here it is. Waiting four months period until patient is ready to go through the other procedure, and uh, when she returned, we uh, go to the second stage uh, surgery. Before uh, the surgery, we're planning meticulously what we have to do. We have to extract premolar, place our mm, uh, first and second premolar with sinus lift here and here, and um, placing the uh, implant at the zone of the second molar. So, this is the occlusal view, making all the planning procedure, and looking at the situation. This is the situation before the surgery. We take out the temporary crown, raise it the flaps, and uh, making our uh, initial osteotomy with denser drills at the zone of first premolar. Here it is. Then we're done with osteotomy. Of course, we enlarge uh, the alveolar ridge. We began with uh, piezo surgery tips. I began every my cases with piezo surgery because uh, we can correct the direction which we need. It's um, like uh, we're using it to, to be sure that we can correct and go in the right direction, making control uh, X-ray to be sure that the direction is right. And uh, we perform uh, crystal approach science lift using the dense drills. Let's return for the moment for on this picture. Look at this. We make autografting of the sinus and uh, very uh, carefully um, go two, maybe one and a half, two millimeter above the uh, zone of the uh, compact um, bone of the uh, sinus. Uh, and once again, continue uh, with um, augmentation. Uh, take our um, mineralized uh, allograft and using um, a reverse 150 uh, RPM motions, we um, put the bone in the sinus. Look at this. Here it is. We make the sinus augmentation using uh, the dense drills very easily. And then we uh, uh, look at this. Take our implants. Wetting it with CGF, I don't know, does it work or not. Um, at least I know that it's not prevent the integration of the implant, so I wetting all my implants with CGF and place my implants. Here it is. We see the augmented sinus and we see the implant placed uh, in the zone of uh, first prom premolar. Then we go to the zone of uh, second premolar. Extract the teeth, perform, uh, here it is, perform uh, our uh, crystal approach sinus lift. You can see uh, the membrane of the sinus here and uh, grafted uh, socket. Once again, we mm, take our CGF, cover the implant and place it in the zone of uh, sec uh, second premolar. Here it is. Then make a control extra, uh, intraoral X-ray, and we see the uh, bone which we uh, grafted using uh, denser drills. This is crystal approach sinus lift using denser drills, and it works phenomenal. Then we go to the zone of second molar. Look at this uh, picture. We make uh, the sinus lift at this zone, and um, um, we will show you how it looks like. Here it is. Look at this zone. We see the intact um, 
membrane of the sinus using the technique which uh, yesterday uh, Dr. Ziv Mazur uh, presented in his uh, lecture. And it works 100%. Sometimes it doesn't work because we are in a hurry. But uh, if we follow the protocol, everything working well. Then we take our bone, feel it, and look at this. We have very small tear here. Why? Because we are in a hurry. So we, uh, that's the way how I prepare all the sites I want to show you. Continue with dense drills, making the autograting. And feel uh, the uh, sinus at the zone of the uh, second molar with the bone, bone chips. Um, preliminary, we feel uh, the, si the sinus floor with uh, PRF membranes, making some roof, uh, making sure that um, small perforation that we can get uh, with, uh, with the technique uh, will be covered well enough. And place the implant at the zone of the second molar. Look at this side. This is grafted sinus. And look at the uh, line of the uh, curvature of the, the um, sinus uh, floor. I think it's not easy case for uh, the sinus um, lift with crestal approach, but we perform it well enough. We are waiting some period of time. Yeah, we make a contour augmentation at the zone of the first premolar, of course, because we have bone deficiency here. We take our uh, cross-linked membrane, uh, place uh, the sticky bone, uh, or never mind. Uh, we place our freeze-dried mineralized allograft, make a contour augmentation, and suturing. Here it is. Making control CBCT five month la uh, months later. Look at this. We have new contour of uh, compact uh, plate at the uh, sinus, here it is. This is the new line which we got. We see the compact uh, bone here. And uh, it means that we have integrated bone there and uh, after five, six months we got new volume of the bone. And we make uh, CBCT scans for all these uh, three implants. Look at the, this part. This is the um, zone of the second molar. We have enough bone surrounding the implant at the uh, top of the implant, and fair enough bone around the implant. This is the zone of the second premolar, the same. Look at this, this is the vestibular bone. And scan of the zone of the uh, first premolar, where we place uh, the bone, make the contour augmentation. Look at this, this is the new volume of the bone, and new cortical plate around the augmented zone. This is the, three, uh, the CBCT scan from the uh, zone of the uh, cavity. We see how uneven um, uh, bone we have here. This is the, uh, what we got six months later. And going to the second stage surgery. Of course, we have some bone uh, soft tissue deficiency here. Look at this part. This is mucosal part. This is um, uh, not stable and not keratinized. Of course, we want to get some zone of keratinized tissue, and I will show how we do it. We raised vestibular fla flap, as you see. Well enough amount of bone around all th three implants. Measuring the ICQ, ISQ at the zone of the uh, second premolar, it's 77. Six months later, zone one uh, of the uh, second molar, it's about the same, 73. It's not, not bad. We forgot to um, measure the zone of uh, first premolar, but I think that it's, it will be okay because we have the most amount of the bone around this, uh, this implant. So we make uh, uh, our PRF membranes and use the poncho technique, use the uh, rubber dump punch, 
uh, use this uh, PRF membrane as poncho and place it around the implant, fixing our healing abutment. Here it is at the zone of first premolar, zone of second premolar, placing healing abutment at the zone of the second molar, covering the zone in between the implants. And here it is. We are ready to uh, close the flaps. So with suturing the flaps with uh, no tension because uh, we don't need to um, lose some zone of keratinized tissue we got here. This is the X control X-ray. And that's the emergence profile we got three weeks, three and a half weeks later. We take out our uh, healing abutments and ready to go ahead. We want to create ideal emergence profile. So we order our temporary crowns and began this, uh, to work with this um, dynamic compression techniques. And look at this. This is the new emergence profile around all three implants. And uh, we make uh, the emergence profile even uh, at the zone of Pontic. We order individual uh, zirconia abutment. It's a hybrid abutment. Make the control X-ray and order our zirconium bridge. This is the day of delivery of the bridge. This is the occlusal view, control X-ray, to, to be sure that there is no mm, uh, cement remnants around the implant. <coughs> and this is the final view of the bridge work we deliver at the, at the end of this work. So uh, uh, <coughs> let's go ahead. One more case of tooth extraction and socket preservation with delayed implant and connective tissue graft. Here it is, the tooth which we are going to uh, extract. Initial view. We have an abscess here in the zone of bif bifurcation. So we, we uh, divide the tooth, the coronal part of the tooth, and very gently extract uh, the uh, roots. Here it is, what we have after extraction very thin uh, bone in between the roots and deficiency on the vestibular side. So we grafted the zone of uh, extraction. We not go uh, to place the uh, implant at the day of extraction because uh, we have very little amount of um, bone between the uh, root tip and um, alveolar nerve. Covering the socket with PRF membranes, suturing. This is what we have at the beginning of the procedure, and that's what we got at the end of the process when we graft the socket. Now we have to wait some three, four months mm, until this, the next stage. Four months later, patient returned to us. We raised the flap. See that we have an uh, efficient amount of uh, bone of the grafted zone. This is CBCT scan. We have more than five millimeters uh, of the bone on the uh, edge of the ridge. And now we are going to place the implant. We make the virtual implant placement on CBCT scans, of course, to be sure that uh, everything will be okay with the implant placement. And using piezo-surgery tips, we make our initial uh, osteotomy preparation, making sure that uh, the direction is okay, so uh, we are parallel with, uh, with the neighboring tooth. Then using osteodensification protocol, using denser drills, we enlarge the osteotomy site. Here it is. And placing the implant at the zone of osteotomy. I usually use subcrestal implant placement, despite we listen today that it's not good maybe to place the implant subcrestally because we can uh, lose the initial stability and got uh, it, um, the initial stability less than it's supposed to be. But that's the way I work. Usually, I place my implants a little bit subcrestally. 
<coughs> harvested connective, connective tissue graft uh, from the tuberosity zone and place it it's up under the vestibular flap. Here it is. Look at this connective tissue graft under the vestibular flap. Then we place our healing abutment and suturing it. Making post-op x-ray to be sure that the abutment is sitting fully and properly. <coughs> then patient disappeared for three months. For what reason, we don't know. Then three months later, she returned. And this is the standard uh, healing abutment and emergence profile created with the, with the standard abutment. We take an impressions and uh, order a and a temporary crown. This is the day of delivery of temporary crown. We don't see the contours of the crown because uh, on the x-ray it's uh, translucent. And it's good because uh, when we go to increase the width of the cervical part of the crown, we will see gradually how we uh, make uh, the shape of the crown uh, wider and wider. So this is the emergence profile we got after first modification. We see the difference already here. We see the uh, zone of uh, the cervical part from vestibular side, and we see that now we, we are closer to the uh, uh, neighboring tooth. And uh, finally, we will have the crown with, without any black triangle between the uh, premolar and molar. So we modify temporary crown, adding incrementally connect, uh, um, global composite. Look at this. Here it is. And this is the second uh, modification. It's, you see that we have much more composite from both sides of the crown. Of course, from the vestibular side and the lingual side, but we cannot see on the x-ray. And look at this. This is the situation just after we remove our healing abutment. And this is what we have a month later. Big difference. Look at this line. It's much more vestibulary uh, positioned, and um, it allows us to be more natural with, with our crowns and with emergence profile of the crown. So this is before uh, this is with, uh, the photo with temporary cr crown. We take it out, and got our final crown. Usually, if it's possible, we use uh, screw-retained crowns because it, we, we have an uh, option to retrieve it if we need and uh, to care about situation with the crowns. It, sometimes it, it may be broken with uh, the ceramic may chipping or something else. This is the technique we uh, make the transfer to uh, individualized transfer and sending it to laboratory uh, for uh, getting 100% uh, the same size and same, same shape of uh, our uh, definite restoration, um, which uh, it allows us to uh, not to lose any um, details uh, when we make our uh, impression. Look at this. This is the technique. It, uh, here it describes how we got its usual technique. We make, um, we got our uh, implant analog attach our temporary crown to this analog, then make uh, with the silicone some dyes, take out the crowns, and um, fix our uh, transfer, which we use for open technique, uh, open tray technique, fill uh, this uh, place with, let's return, with flowable composite or pattern resin, never mind, here it is. This is the crown, temporary crown, we take it out attach our transfer and uh, fill the gap between the transfer and the contour of this die uh, with anything, with uh, flowable composite, with pattern resin or anything else. So we attach our individualized um, transfer to the implant, take the account, uh, take the, 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 the make our impression and send it to laboratory. 
reattach the temporary crown, waiting until the laboratory will send a final uh, restoration. And here it is. Look at this. It's clearly visible, new uh, emergence profile, and it's beautiful, I think. This is the permanent crown. And final crown delivery. These signs of uh, blood means that uh, when we make our uh, correction of temporary crown and polished it, it's, it's the, um, must, it must be done every time when we add some flowable composite. Uh, finally, we get some uh, attachment between the epithelial cells and the surface of the uh, temporary crown, uh, like with every uh, polished surface, by the way. So it doesn't mean that we have some uh, crushed soft tissue here. Soft tissue is very stable. Um, uh, it takes about one and a half, two months to get this result. So um, you know, we just transfer uh, the situation from the oral cavity to the laboratory and got our final restoration. And uh, here is final restoration attached to the implant and control X-ray. That's the way we try to mimic the nature every time we work with uh, our soft tissue. Let's go to another case, case of tooth extraction and uh, restoring the missing buccal wall of the socket with delayed implant placement and connective tissue graft. This is the zone of the lower first molar. Look at the abscess around the neck of the tooth. Of course, we uh, um, cut the bridge work and um, extract the tooth, make a traumatic to tooth extraction. Here we have big lesion. So we have the hesitancy, big dehiscency here uh, from vestibular side uh, of the um, alveolar socket because of uh, this uh, inflammation here, which uh, was uh, during two or three weeks until patient was unable to help the situation and come to the clinic. We got some cross-linked collagen membrane, place it in between the uh, vestibular flap and uh, vestibular wall of the alveolar ridge, and preserve the socket with uh, FDBA in sticky format, which I use usually in my practice. Fill the socket. We do it very tightly. Here it is. And cover the socket with the PRF membranes suturing the edges of the uh, soft tissue around the socket and waiting some two weeks. Then we take out our uh, sutures and let, letting the patient to go and live with his uh, regular life. Patient returned four months later, make uh, the CBCT scan. And we uh, diagnose the situation. We see that we have enough uh, the width and the length of the bone here virtual implant placement. Of course, we uh, think about the zone of the second molar. Here we see the deficiency, of course. This is another view of CBCT scans, the 3D scans. So we are ready to second stage surgery. We raise the flaps, well enough amount of bone in both sides. We make a uh, osteotomy at the zone of the first molar. Wetten the implant with CGF and uh, place our implant with more than 45 Newton per centimeter uh, torque, initial torque. Here it is. We have good initial torque and uh, it's okay. Then we go to the zone of second molar, place it, the implant there with about the same torque, 45 Newton per centimeter. Here it is the, our initial drill from the Ders, uh, Versa uh, set. Then um, we make some perforation of cortical plate here, making sure that the thickness of the bone around the implant will be more than two millimeters, as we say. It's very critical. So we make contour augmentation here got some uh, autogenous bone from, from the neighboring side, from the linea obliqua externa. Usually it's around the second and third molar. This is the device which you use to get this amount of autogenous bone. And place this autogenous bone at 
uh, in one layer and covering it with um, xenobone as the second layer. It's the like sandwich technique. Covering it with collagen membrane, placing our healing abutment, PRF membranes, and suturing. Here it is. You can see here that uh, we overlap our healing abutment with the lingual um, flap. And in this case, it serves, this healing abutment serves as a tent for uh, this um, flap. Beneath the flap, we will get, uh, during this uh, period of waiting for one month, new amount of uh, connective tissue, which will uh, increase the amount of the soft tissue around the implant. We'll see how does it work. This is the control X-ray, of course. Then waiting two weeks. Of course, uh, the patient cannot and uh, not able to uh, keep the hygiene on the high level, cannot clean it with uh, the brush. But it's OK. We will handle the situation. We will clean it by ourselves. And wait, waiting some period of time for uh, implant uh, integration. What we have after five months, we take out uh, our healing abutments and see that we have about three millimeters of uh, soft tissue around the implants. And now we want to create some uh, emergence profile which allows us to escape uh, black triangles and uh, possibility of make, uh, trapping the food in between the implants and tooth and between two implants. We order provisional crowns, here it is for the first and for the second uh, molar, and ready to go ahead. This is the emergence profile which we have with a standard healing abutment before the first modification. Look at this. We place our uh, temporary crowns, already modified it, and we get some blanching, some uh, ischemia around the crowns. We have to wait for 10, 15 maybe minutes to be sure that this ischemia is transitory. If not, we have to take out our crowns, grinding a, lot, a little bit, to, uh, and return it to see that um, this ischemia is transitory. Otherwise, we will have some necrosis there and complication. It's very important. This is uh, the amount of uh, flowable composite which we add to the uh, cervical part of the implant. And of course, as I say, we have to polish it very carefully and very meticulously. Otherwise, it will um, collect some food remnants and uh, we will get some uh, perimplantitis or perimucositis at least. Patient well instructed how to care about the uh, temporary crown, how to, to clean it using the floss and everything which we have in our arsenal. So what we got two weeks later, look at this. Two weeks later, we got different uh, shape of the emergence profile for both of the implants and something like interdental papilla between two implants. Then I go to the second stage. We uh, make a little bit more correction, add a new amount of uh, com flowable composite and modified provisional crowns. You see the difference between first and second stage. Of course, the second, at the second stage we have more uh, changing the shape of the crown at the cervical part. This is before and after picture, what we get to, uh, after one month of uh, modification of these uh, temporary crowns. Uh, that's what we got uh, in months, in month and half usually. Look at this, new interdental papilla and totally new contour of the cervical part of the emergence profile. It, uh, when we place uh, the mm, definite restoration, we'll get something like natural teeth. Look at this, how it looks like. This is the final shape and final uh, emergence profile we got. And this is a crucial view, totally different situation. And everything because we have a sufficient amount of uh, soft tissue around the implants. If you got only one and a half or two millimeter implants, it's impossible to create such type of emergence profile and to mimic the nature. So to have uh, the possibility and the opportunity to go this way, we have to uh, um, be sure that we can create sufficient amount of soft tissue before this procedure. 
and that's the permanent crown delivered. I think that the view is, uh, looks like natural teeth. Look at these prominences around the implant, around the uh, definite crowns, around the final restoration. It looks like natural, in my opinion. So that's the reason we uh, spent three or sometimes four visits of patient to the clinic, modifying every time uh, the teeth and uh, returning it, uh, pushing the soft tissue and um, creating this new emergence profile. This is the control X-ray. So this is the another case. What we have, very narrow reach at the zone of lower uh, first and second molars. Vertical and horizontal bone deficiency. So this is how it looks like uh, the reach before the surgery. We raise the vestibular and lingual flap. This is uh, how we um, make sure that our um, uh, lingual flap will be mobile enough to uh, be able to, uh, to make the closure without uh, any tension. We're using piezo surgery. We already discussed this technique today. This is the piezo surgery um, cut. We make only a horizontal cut. Go to 10 millimeters. Using denser drills to make the osteotomy site for the implants. Making, uh, wetting the implant with CGF. We make, uh, I will show uh, one vertical incision uh, cut here. Here it is. Look at this. This is the vertical cut. Wetted the implant with CGF and placing the implant. Look at this photo. This is the vertical cut. <laughs> Otherwise, we will destroy the uh, vestibular um, wall because there is no practically zero amount of um, uh, medullar uh, bone, so only cortical pr pl plate from vestibular and lingual side. But anyway, we place the implant. And the second one, look at this. We have uh, so much elasticity with the bone and we were able to manage the situation. When look at this, it's, it's really amazing. It shows how elastic bone may be. The, the only uh, condition of all this procedure, uh, not be in a hurry. We have to wait to take the time for the bone to mm, be able to uh, make some elastic deformation. So what we did, uh, did later, this is the X-ray. We, we put the cover screws and make the bone augmentation around the implant. We're collect, collecting auto, autogenous bone around and um, use them to fill the, the gap between the implant, uh, between the uh, two uh, parts of the bone, two plates. Look at this, here it is. We fill the defects um, between these uh, two bone plates with the autogenous bone and then we make a sticky bone from min mineralized uh, allograft and cover the, all the zone of the uh, implant placement and augment it, hold the uh, ridge. Cover it with uh, cross-linked collagen membrane. Why with the cross-linked? Because we want to be sure that during for six months it will not resort. And uh, we, when we go to the second stage surgery and uh, open the flap, uh, raise the flap, we see that uh, we have some remnants of the uh, long-lasting collagen, mem collagen membrane. There is a uh, different opinion. Some, uh, uh, in the literature, there is opinion that it's not um, penetrated by the liquids, uh, with, uh, by the biological fluids, so it, it's not a good idea to use them, but I use a lot of uh, cross-linked collagen membrane in my practice, and with this membrane, I'm sure that um, uh, they are, um, the function of the membrane to protect from connective tissue growth will be 100% uh, fulfilled. So, making the sutures, uh, we place three layers of sutures, deep uh, horizontal mattress suture, marginal horizontal mattress suture, and then look at this. This is 
deep mattress suture, this is marginal mattress sutures, and the third layer is, here it is. So we have to be sure that uh, our um, suturing um, will be 100% um, effective and will not get uh, some dehiscences, some problems with, with uh, the case. So four months later, we return and look at this. Look at the new amount of bone around the implant. Here it is. The second one is fully covered. We are ready to, to end up. Yeah, we have a lot of cases to show what we do. Finish. OK. We'll go through it very um, rapidly. This is the new zone of the uh, bone we got around the implant here and here. We make an ISQ measurement to, to be sure that we have uh, enough stability. This is the zone of first molar. This is the zone of second molar. 85 is high enough. Harvesting some connective tissue graft from the palatal side. Using Zucchelli technique, you see here how we depitalize uh, full thickness graft. Here it is. This is 50C blades. We take out epithelial layer and use uh, this pure connective tissue graft to increase the volume of soft tissue here. Here it is. We position connective tissue graft uh, beneath the vestibular uh, flap and make some suturing. This is the control X-ray. This is the donor site at the day of the surgery, and this is the fifth day after taking out this uh, connective tissue graft. This is what we got one week after delivery of the temporary crown. Beginning to create new contour of soft tissue, adding some composite, flowable composite at the um, neck of these temporary crowns. And this is new emergence profile after uh, one or two times of um, uh, modifying this provisional crown. This is the first provisional crown, then we modify it second time. And using dynamic compression technique, we got new volume of soft tissue around the implants. Look at these new contours. I think it's very wonderful. This is the other view. We take the impression with individualized, individualized transfers and uh, order the final crowns. This is the day of delivery of the final crowns. And this is the final view of this work. So, it's time to finish the lecture, but it's only, I don't know, 20% of my cases. <laughs> yeah, I understand that you are all tired, so, Maybe I, I will ask to uh, the, the technicians, maybe I will do it by myself. I want to uh, show you the last case. It's very interesting. Soft tissue enhancement mimicking the nature. That's the idea of all my lecture. And we make some surgeries, place the implants, five implants on the upper jaw. And this is uh, the view of um, upper jaw at three weeks after the surgery. We see deep horizontal mattress suture is still there. And that's what we got using these uh, dynamic compression techniques. Let's go through it. It's about 10 slides. We'll go very rapidly through it. You see that we have deficiency of um, keratinized tissue around the implants. What we have done, we uh, make uh, our vestibular plasty with apically positioned uh, partial thickness flap. It's uh, strictly what uh, showed Dr. Glackman yesterday on his course. Then we got free gingival graft from the pellet. Here it is. And making some incision, look at there. We need to increase the volume and the length of this graft because you know, it's shrinking just after you take it out from the mouth. We make some cuts and uh, um, stretch the uh, free gingival graft. Then we suture it. Let's see 
what we what we have at the third day. This is the this is the view of the third day. You see that it's covered with fibrin, uh, some uh, layer, and uh, the process of degradation of superficial uh, layer of this free gingival graft already begin. But uh, we hopefully uh, see that what we have at the seventh day, a little bit better, but still we want to see totally another view. This is the zone, uh, donor's zone, where we got this uh, connect, the full thickness graft. It's still not bad. And this is the day when we're ready to take out our sutures. Look at here. It's uh, only small uh, um, places of um, not fully epitheli epithelized um, graft here and here. This is the new zone of epithelization. Look at here. And this is the donor zone at the 12th day. Then what we got at the end. This is the beginning of the case. And this is the end of the case. Look at the new zone of keratinized tissue. It's about one, 10 millimeters. So uh, to be uh, stable, to be sure that um, for a long period of time, we'll get stable uh, condition of marginal uh, gingiva around the implants. We have to be uh, able to pr um, perform such type of procedure. This is the before and after. And we, of course, make another uh, small surgery to increase the volume of soft tissue at the zone of, between the implants. We place connective tissue grafts under the vestibular flap. We make the mid-crestal incision. And what, uh, why we do this? We want to get some papillas here. And what we get at after the, all this procedure? Look at this. It looks like a natural uh, papillas in between the uh, implants. And we are, able to, we are able to create the new zone of large keratinized tissue. We do the same procedure for this zone, of course. Here it is. You can see here. And now we are ready to send the patient to the restorative dentist. Of course, we close this uh, gap with uh, our uh, connective tissue graft, place it here. And we make new papillas between this uh, central and lateral incisors. That's what we call tissue sculpturing. And uh, as I say, the purpose of all our work is to mimicking the nature. If we can do it, then we can strive the perfection. Look at this new volume of the soft tissue and stable condition of keratinized tissue. What we want to get from all these uh, our cases, that's sufficient amount of soft tissue and, of course, sufficient amount of uh, bone around the implants. Thank you so much for your patience.